right, so I'll switch gears now to look at setting up to use the graphical user interface on Linux. And you'll find uh, times that administration is easier using a built-in Linux graphical tool, say, or an application's administration must be done or is more you know, easily done using a graphic tool. So providing the data center supports its use, the virtual network computing tool or VNC is the most popular way for administrators to gain graphical access to a Linux system. Now this provides a remote desktop on the Linux system. And these days the VNC server is installed separately after the initial system installation is done or smartly it's installed as part of a bundle with the Linux operating system. So you may find it already installed. Uh, we'll talk later about how to install it. The most popular VNC packages, and there are uh, a number of them, are Tiger VNC and Real VNC. And the reason I mention them is because both provide support for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux operating systems. So a lot of flexibility and access there. Real VNC supports Unix operating systems as well, you know, like AIX, HPUX, and Solaris, and interestingly is included with the default Raspberry Pi operating system, Raspbian. All right, but for now, let's leave this alone. I'll be covering software installation later in the module. Let's talk more about VNC. So how does it work? Well, VNC uses a protocol called Remote Frame Buffer to efficiently transfer frames of graphical images from a server system to a client. Now, the client is often referred to as the viewer system. So this is a client server protocol. You set up VNC on the server. This is the server on which you want to gain GUI access. And you install a viewer on the client system from which you want to gain access. Now, VNC is based on ports, as you would imagine. It's network based. So any firewalls between the client and the server must be configured to allow the ports configured for VNC's use. Now, by default, VNC uses ports 5900 plus display numbers for each user added to 5900. So for example, a user set up to use display number four would require port 5904 to be open as well. Now the port numbers can be changed if the administrator desires in a configuration file. And this is done differently depending on the VNC server package that's being used. All right. So let's get into a little bit more detail. Once the VNC server package is installed, some configuration is required. The configuration boils down to basically four steps. The first one, copy and update the sample configuration file, possibly more than one if multiple users need unique VNC access. Update the firewall rule, VNC server traffic to flow. You set a VNC password for each user that will be using VNC, and then you start the VNC server for each user that will be using VNC. Now, optionally, you can set the VNC server uh, service to start at reboot, and that's a pretty good idea. Uh, the configuration file steps are uh, reflected on the screen. Now, take time to review these commands and take note that the exec start command is quite a bit different than what you'll see in the sample configuration file. This is taken from rel 7 where the syntax, uh, that's the sample syntax, actually fails. I've pointed out the syntax that works on the screen. Now, the firewall and VNC server commands are reflected on the screen now. And take even a little bit more time to review these commands. Notice I'm missing the VNC password setting. It's simple. Type the command VNC password, then type the password twice. Also notice that I supplied a couple of extra bonus commands that will be useful as you use VNC. Okay, so to use VNC, the previous stuff was setting up. To use VNC, launch the viewer, and when prompted, supply the server's address and the display number that you've been assigned. Now, you obviously have installed the VNC viewer prior to this on whatever platform you're running the viewer from. Uh, then you enter the VNC display's password, and this should take you to the Linux system's desktop. Now, if the desktop session is not already logged in, you'll have to log into the session using a valid Linux user ID and password combination. We talked about that in previous videos. And now with VNC configured and started, the Linux desk desktop that is installed and started with, the, uh, with, with VNC can vary. Uh, I'm going to display a couple of graphics that give you a feel for what you can expect. 
So what you see here is an example of the GNOME desktop. You'll see the upper left-hand corner contains links to menus for a couple of categories, applications and places. Um, applications is the place to start. Here you'll find configuration tools, web browsers, office tools like a spreadsheet presentation app, as well as tools to manage the software on the system. Now, since I'm not going to focus on uh, GUI management of Linux on power, I'll skip the details. But I've found that the tools uh, are rather intuitive and they're pretty easy to figure out. Also note that you know, what you see on the screen may vary depending on what packages have been installed either during the installation of the operating system or after the install of the operating system was complete. Okay. Now, one of the GUI tools of particular interest that I'll highlight though before I wrap up the system, wrap up is the system monitor. Uh, what, ad what administrator hasn't been faced with a question of poor performance and needed to figure out what process or processes are using most of the system's resources? Now, as you can see in my examples, there isn't a lot of system utilization at the time they were captured, but you can imagine seeing processes in the table with high processor or memory utilization, and those would be the ones to focus on in a crisis moment. All right, so that wraps up. Uh, my lesson on VNC and graphical access to Linux. If you need more information, I'll be honest, there's plenty of very good supplemental documentation for say Tiger VNC and the GNOME desktop on Red Hat's support page. Very intuitive stuff.